video let us talk something about uh, the upasana having chosen um, the ganesha atharvashisha as our daily practice let us talk something about what kind of upasana uh, what would the word upasana sum up for this chosen practice of course a point needs to be mentioned over here that when we talk about upanishads we spoke about the upanishads in the in the previous uh, video when we talk about the upanishads the first 10 in the line which i mentioned uh, are very valuable and most commented upon these upanishads uh, do not have any form that upasana is not from form to formless in fact it talks about the formless directly so people who pursue the gnana yoga and the path of knowledge uh, choose uh, such a upanishad that uh, you know takes them into deep contemplation and realization of the truth through the study of that script itself and there is no form there so um uh, you know the the study itself is the upasana that means they, they you know they study the scripture and they contemplate the churn they masticate these words um and the wisdom there in you know comes as an essence of this churning comes as an essence of this masticating um gnana yoga is a is a is a path that uh, people take on to where they use their intellect and their very subtle uh, understanding to to reach the the absolute and to reach the understanding of the absolute of course it is supported with uh, dhyan uh, yoga also uh, long hours of meditation and contemplation is is the path that they choose but for people who find doing that uh, as difficult um, and uh, Uh, the ones that choose bhakti as their path any of these upanishads uh, which are dedicated to the deities are uh, a bridge between a blindfolded bhakti practice and um you know uh, and the, and the absolute actual knowledge it's a, it's a very beautiful bridge because it takes you through the help of this form it takes you to into the formless and uh, reveals uh, the brahma vidya therein so uh, in the in this section of upasana we will be talking about uh, how uh, a, a regular process of upasana be designed according to uh, one's need as well as the available time and uh, space uh, first to talk about the word upasana what does upasana mean upa is is the second position you know as we say president and vice president as we say mantri and upamantri second position uh, upa means to sit next to to sit next to or besides um, here uh, this relationship between it's the relationship between god and you you sit next to god you sit next to the form you sit next to your chosen icon of consciousness you sit next to the entire study which you know has the truth and you need to know the truth so you're sitting next to up asana you're taking your asana next to the truth and to the absolute and to the brahman itself um so this this sitting next to the uh, to the deity or to the form or um you know the absolute is not a one time work it's a, it's it's something that needs to be done every day every day every day it becomes a, a part of your daily routine it becomes a part of your daily life apart from all the work that you do and all your worldly uh, obligations this is something that needs to be tied a knot deep within that i have to sit for my upasana every day and therefore um the entire package of the upasana is something you have to design yourself rather than following strict norms uh, instructed or given by uh, someone else um in the in the olden times there were you know there was i think a lot of time available so people had lot of elaborate rituals that they would do every day so the upasana uh, process can be as elaborate as you can make it and can be as crisp as you need it you know so it's a very very personal choice there are a lot of rituals that people incorporate in their daily upasana including cleaning of the deity invocation lighting a lamp start you know chanting a few mantras and then reading out some text and then doing the aarti i mean it can be as elaborate as you want the point here to understand in the modern text 
is that um, it's a relationship that you're establishing between you and the form, a relationship that you're establishing between you and the form and the consciousness behind it. You know, so this relationship has to be based on love and not based on fear. It has to be based on love. It's a very personal relationship. And as much as possible, there should not be a third person intervening to tell you what is right and what is wrong. There are certain very strict norms about deity rituals that have been elaborated in the Karmakand and also, um, you know, over the development of the religious um, ceremonies and rituals over over many years you know people have made a set of rules to follow um i think these are for people who do not use their own discretion and they do not uh, uh you know feel courageous enough to use their own discretion or they just love to follow what has been given to them because that's the right way uh, which I don't think is wrong absolutely uh, it's okay for people who are you know uh, they, they feel safe in following um, the rules laid down or the procedures laid down by our uh, masters teachers and uh, seniors you know but my deep awareness and my deep insight tells me that it's a relationship that you are cultivating relationship between you and God is a very private affair and here all expressions are expressions of love you can take the help of these uh, laid down uh, you know ritualistic uh, methods they're beautiful things in there to smear a kumkum and haldi or to put on some rice grains to make a swastika to decorate the whole altar with flowers. They're very beautiful things. You can incorporate all of them, few of them, as you feel like, and as you grow with your relationship with God. It's not a one day affair. It's a lifelong affair. It's a wedlock, you know. So you could develop as many rituals as you want to with awareness, with reading, with further inquiring, etc. But it's important to understand that this whole practice is not fear-based it is love-based and nothing wrong can ever happen when you do something out of your heart's love and when you do something out of an overpowering of your heart so slowly gradually your whole upasana system um, needs to be developed and it has to be self-developed um, certain things you can begin with with very basic uh, you know things like setting up an altar and uh, installing or initiating a deity form you know like a statue or a, a picture or a portrait or uh, something that is symbolic to the deity you're you know um, initiating the the invocation so there is a process of pran pratishtha which is there in our culture pran pratishtha is like infusing this form with prana it's infusing and bringing it to life you know uh, with the chanting of certain mantras uh, the whole process of pran pratishtha is given in the vedas and this is followed by the priest who normally come home and they do the pran pratishtha of a new statue or a new um, you know um, picture that you would you would dedicate to as as your form of worship or as a form of um, your invocation so uh, without uh, forgetting the true purpose of your whole upasana the true purpose of your whole upasana is to merge with your divine and to be one with him and go beyond the form into the formless and to realize the formless brahman within you this is the true purpose of the entire process not to forget that ever and uh, also to constantly keep in mind that god always loves you the brahman always loves you and there is a there is an element of compassion that comes in the form you know the formless is 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 all pervading and uh, i don't normally attach any emotions to this to this formless power it's power it's powerful but when you take a deity and when you dedicate a form to the consciousness then there is an emotion and there is a relationship that you establish over the years and your conversations with this deity becomes a, a very personal tete every day 
you know so uh, over the years you you start relating you start conversing and you start uh, getting into a state and a process of deep surrender a deep surrender process is initiated as you do your upasana every day and uh, this deep surrender happens uh, at the universal level which is which is such a beautiful thing to happen these people find it very difficult to surrender what do we surrender to when you can't see something what do you surrender to so the whole surrendering process is a very difficult process even for people who are jnana yogis for those who follow the path of knowledge they to keep reading again and again and keep inquiring again and again there is self inquiry that is done every day every day every day to understand the brahman in its uh, in its form and to to teach and to uh, inculcate the the practice of surrender from within so surrender is a very very important thing and that it eventually happens it eventually happens so you know in the upasana there are certain physical acts that we do there are certain physical acts that we do that help and support in the long run the process of surrender things like bowing down or bowing down or you know putting your head uh, prostrating putting your head down on the ground and uh, saying a prayer in the mind uh, you know actions like folding hands putting your head down closing your eyes there are certain actions that your body uh, performs and then your brain understands uh, you know and and it it assists and it takes and it supports the whole act of surrender so do all the things which are necessary for you personally for you customized uh for some people surrendering is easy uh but getting into a routine and a, and on a day to day basis practice is difficult there is laziness there is procrastination there is um uh, there are a lot many obstacles in their life that they are not able to commit to a daily so for, the, so for them it's important to set up a crisp ritual that would not take too much of time and that would not be very time consuming and you can easily perform it and do it every day um for those who find surrender difficult they could incorporate actions prayers affirmations and declarations uh verbally said aloud to the deity or rather to 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 himself you know that would teach him in the long run to surrender that would program his mind in the long run to surrender similarly there are people who um don't find time to learn mantras or to learn or to read other scriptures that they would love to this can also be incorporated in your upasana you could keep 5 minutes aside to just read out the list of mantras that you want to eventually learn i have been practicing this uh you know in my in my upasana the the mantras that i like to to learn i would just print them out or write them down on a sheet of paper and for the next couple of months i would just read them once every day and then and then you memorize them so it's a journey you know the upasana is also a journey and um, uh the the you know the the more complicated you make it the more difficult you find it to adhere to um so keep it simple keep it transparent keep it inquiry based keep it um uh, you know something that you can relate to not because somebody said to do this but because you understand why you're doing it keep it very logical and uh, yet full of emotive uh, expressions you know and uh, this upasana then uh is a very spiritually grounding process that one experiences every day it unloads your mind it uh, helps you to surrender it gives you very deep good sleep at night and normally therefore people put their upasana process um in elaboration in the evening and some people do it in the morning early morning uh when after they finish their bath it depends completely on you you can even do it morning and evening both so it completely depends on you for the ganesha um atharva shisha upasana for those who are doing the upasana of ganesha and uh, reading studying the atharva shisha upanishad every day for them uh of course a small deity or small statue or a small picture of ganesha the mahaganapati um avatar of ganesha is one of the um you know 
uh, most revered and the most glorified form of Ganesha. It represents consciousness itself. The Mahaganapati avatar is with many hands, and um, you know there 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 are uh, ten hands and a uh, Lakshmi sitting on the lap. We have in our ashram a beautiful temple of Mahaganapati. Um, uh, a picture of this, if you can send me an email, if anybody wants a picture of this uh, beautiful uh, form of Ganesha, I, I can send it to you. You could send us an email. So um, a, a beautiful deity or a small picture of the Ganesha is enough for you to begin your uh, Upasana, uh, you know, commit to the Upasana process. Uh, get a Pran Pratishtha done um, by a Pujari or a Panditji. Or uh, if you don't want uh, that elaboration, you could do the Pran Pratishtha yourself also. It's an emotive expression. Give it a beautiful, nice bath with Ganga Jal or, um, you know, clean water. Uh, do the five element cleansing of the, of the uh, statue, the stone statue. Um, and then uh, 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 transmit your energy and breath into eight uh, for people who are into healing, you know how to invoke crystals, you know how to invoke stones, you could do, you could follow that procedure also. But for, the, for those who want to be sure you've done it properly, then it's nice to call a Pujari and let him do the Pran Pratishtha. It's a one-time process. Let him do it and establish the idol, uh, you know, install the idol for you. And then you could carry on with your process every day uh, yourself. Um, in the in the upasana process, the altar needs to be set. You need to set up an altar, a space. An altar is nothing like a, a touch me not place or something like that. You know the 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 the, the best thing that you could reward yourself through this journey in this journey is to remove fear from your mind completely and be uh, as love oriented as you uh, as you can. Uh, the more you are love oriented, the the better you are able to grow because fear is a very big obstacle. Fear is a very big vigna in itself. So remove the fear completely. There is nothing called punishment and there is nothing, there is no power sitting there that will punish you for doing something, uh, some act uh, wrongly. You know, for instance, uh, uh, I saw a small girl the other day making, you know, the swastika in a reverse image. In a, in a mirror image, which tantrically uh, we call that image the image of destruction, whereas the swastika that you make straight is a, is a symbol for creation. So with a small girl doing it wrongly is not, uh, it's not something like a punishable act. You just need to, you know, uh, uh, prompt her and tell her, baby, this is not the right image. This is the right image and with love you know with love similarly when you do a mistake yourself just tell yourself this is not the way why do i need to do it this way and it's okay you know there's nothing called a punishable system here in the universe um other than literal violence and other than literal destruction nothing boomerangs back as destruction and violence you know it boomerangs back exactly so when you do things with love it boomerangs back as love and it's excusing uh beautiful uh, forgiving energy you know so there isn't anything wrong ever but yes you should you should study you should research and you know you have so much of information available these days to to tell you small little things the way you would want to do it if you're reading a website on on you know something uh, like a, a daily ritual that you could do it could be very elaborate you could chalk out things that you don't want <coughs> and do the things that you like uh, that's a beautiful thing to do. You customize it for yourself and fix up a time that you would uh, be able to commit to every day. So in the Ganesha Pasana, you know, you need you need to have a small picture or a deity of the Ganesha, a small altar um, where you would uh, you could sit. This whole space the, of your altar becomes a very um, highly charged energetic space where uh, you know, you enter into that space every day and you you get you get charged and you get aligned to that vibration. So it's important and nice to have a special place for your upasana where you could sit down every day. Of course, this again does not become a limitation or a rule. If you're traveling, you could sit and do your upasana anywhere, you know, and if there is sometimes not possible for you to sit in that space, you could sit and do it anywhere. It doesn't become like a rigid rule, you know, it's just that you're creating a space of high energy value 
and you enter into the space and you get into that alignment instantly and you're able to you know communicate with your um, with your deity with your lord so once the space is set and your idol has been installed then reading out the Atharva Shisha every day you see in the, there are people who do uh, you know daily rituals and worship of idol live in Ganesha without the Atharva Shisha also Atharva Shisha is a Upanishad and it has the Brahma Gyan in it so it's it's followed by and read by people who wish to reach the absolute you know even through bhakti and even through blindfolded bhakti also people receive grace grace is very gracious you know grace showers on you anyway but if you are reading the Atharva Shisha Upanishad every day all the advantages of um, the the Vedic um, wisdom um, shower upon you and uh, reading the Atharva Shisha once uh, the whole sequence of the Atharva Shisha in the next video um, uh, I will be you know we'll be posting the entire text of the Upanishad as well the way it should be read and um, so you know you, you begin with the Shanti Mantra and you read the whole text and then uh, you could sit down in Dhyan or you could sit down in meditation for a while and after that offer flowers and do your uh, prostration and uh, if there is a conversation if you wish to surrender something you could do that as well so reading the Atharva Shisha now in the in the Ganesh Upasana that is recommended reading the Atharva Shisha Upasana, uh, Upanishad also has a number of options you could read the Upanishad once um, or you could read it once in the morning and once in the evening or you could read it thrice a day once in the morning once in the afternoon once in the evening or there is a system of avartan doing atharva shisha avartan this is something very beautiful it's like repeating the upanishads a number of times and uh, it has been uh, mentioned in um, uh, you know old uh, religious text and written by many masters and many upasaks in the past that doing these avartans is a very energizing and a very exhilarating and a very um, a very nourishing kind of a practice Ganesh avartans are done on special days especially in numbers like people do an avartan of 11 or 21 or 51 or 108 avartans and even Sahastra avartan that is a 1000 times uh, chanting of the Upanishad uh, it uh, you know brings up a, a beautiful uh, you know strong vibrating energy and uh, it's really a very very nourishing experience very very nourishing experience in fact for those who want to get into um, regular practice of the Upanishad can commit to 11 avartans every day um, can commit to 21 avartans every day and even 108 avartans every day it does not take a very long time this sums up your I mean if you if you if you get into this practice it sums up your entire spiritual um, you know um, japa practice or uh, cleansing practice that we say doing the Ganesh avartans every day itself is like doing strong japa you know and uh, doing the avartans is like doing small anushthans that normally people do for mantra japa so it's a very very powerful process and on special days especially if you if you take the help of a panchang or a calendar indian calendar you would know days which are really very powerful uh, we have the moon calendar and the powerful uh, you know uh, uh, transitory points of the moon are very uh, very invocating and very um, you know rewarding to do the avartans so these should be done even during uh, um, you know the Ganesha festival that happens in around September even at that time all the 10 days strong avartans can be done etc so how elaborate your upasana has to be and how crisp and concise it has to be is your freedom and removing fear from it infuse a lot of love into it and um, uh, start your practice um, for bhakti yogis I mean this is the, the practice of Atharva Shisha is a is such a beautiful combination of bhakti yoga and jnana yoga because you're studying Upanishad on one hand and on the other hand you're cultivating 
um, shraddha bhakti and uh, devotion in your heart to the deity. It's a very beautiful combination of jnana and bhakti together and a very a very complete sadhana in itself over the years i'm sure it uh, uh, gives you an experience a uh, very deep intense experience you grow uh, the falashruti in the atharvashirsha upanishad uh, falashruti is a rewarding factor a stanza dedicated to what rewards you get out of chanting the atharvashirsha uh, for people who are belonging to the worldly um, sphere and uh, would like to know what am I getting out of doing this? This Falashruti is very nice. But for people uh, who are bhaktas like me, uh, we don't we don't need to really uh, keep that as a motivating factor to be doing the Atharvashisha. Once you understand and know that you get the Brahmagyan out of this Upanishad, there is no further reward that is required. There can't be any better reward that uh, one can get, uh, you know, than uh, self-realization and experience of the truth and uh, getting close and uh, into complete dissolution of the Lord himself. So the, there is, but for the worldly people, there is a Falashruti which gives you elaboration on how and when to chant the Atharvashish to acquire or to attain or to get uh, rewards of different worldly kinds, uh, you know. And we'll talk about the Falashruti in the later video when we are doing the script and I'm going to explain each of the khandas of the, uh, you know, uh, the entire Upanishad one by one. In the next video, we'll do a detailed explanation of the Upanishad itself.